So, Mick Jagger. What comes to mind when you think of Mick Jagger? Even in my generation, we all know who he is, and we certainly know who the Rolling Stones are. One thing you can say for sure about Mick's style is that it was definitely different for the time. Sometimes hardcore and macho, other times androgynous and even feminine. But Mick Jagger made it all work. Jagger's image contributed to the brand success of the Rolling Stones, and Jagger wore it all with the utmost confidence and no regrets. The Rolling Stones started their career in the early 1960s and continued throughout the decades. The Stones are still touring. The group of Jagger, Keith Richards, and the drummer Charlie Watts goes all the way back from when they first joined together in the early 1960s. Mick Jagger had pursued an education in economics and accounting and was accepted into the London School of Economics. However, Mick left school to pursue his interest in music and develop his musical style and follow his love for the blues. Ultimately, this business background did help contribute to the success of the Stones. One of the reasons why they moved out of country is to avoid high taxes. Still, the success of Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones brand lies on their public image. A bad boy, rough and rowdy image intertwined with a flamboyant style. Breaking gender and dress barriers contrary, contrary to the culture of the early 1960s. This image of the Stones as, and the frontman, Mick Jagger, which was so cutting edge for the time. As the frontman, Jagger understood how to use the power of fabric, whether it was on stage, for photo shoots, or everyday living to define his brand. While the Beatles had the girls screaming for their early clean-cut innocent appearance, the Stones appealed to both genders with rough and rugged, with a rough and rowdy, rugged bad boy appearances earlier on and later on evolving into one that is more gender neutral and androgynous, which ultimately set the tone for other rock musicians to define gender norms in terms of attire. Men wearing makeup had been so taboo for the time, but it was Mick Jagger and Keith Richards that popularized the guyliner trend. The Jagger and Keith Richards were, are famous for wearing eyeliner. Men in the early 1960s did not wear makeup. Both Mick and Keith made this a part of their signature appearance. The eyeliner was just the start, and Jagger worked constantly to define his style. The New York Magazine comments on Mick's style, Jagger's androgynous allure, mouth almost too large, but he's beautiful and ugly, feminine and masculine, a sport, a rare phenomena. According to a book written by Stephen Simmel called Gender Chameleons, Androgyny in Rock and Roll, 1985, Simmel refers to Jagger as hipless and emancipated, possessing lips of such astonishing lasciviousness that when you put him on stage, he resembles nothing so much as a mixture of male and female. Mick had been known to do the traditional hair flip style, the traditional female hair flip on stage from time to time, even adding feminine mannerisms to his style. What, what is interesting to note is that Mick is accused of marrying his first wife, Bianca, because she looks so much like him. Even one of Mick's former girlfriends told the Baltimore Sun that Mick looked into Bianca's eyes and only saw Mick. Mick Jagger's cutting edge style created a new identity for youth defying traditional gender norms. The style was androgynous. While the Beatles wore suits and neckties in the early 1960s, the Stones evolved from this look much more quickly as Mick preferred the mod style at the time. Similar to to the original bandmate, Brian Jones. Mick also, was also influenced by Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix type, which Mick embraced, was conventionally feminine. Adornments like long hair, bright colors, and elaborate and decorative fabrics, in addition to scarves, jewelry, and floppy hats. In one instance, Jagger defied traditional gender norms by wearing a dress on one of his stages, stage, as one of his stage costumes, during a Hyde Park concert in 1969. While the newspapers commented that Mick wore a white dress over white pants, Jagger simply stated that according to the New Yorker, it was a funny flousey thing. It wasn't a dress, it was a sort of pleasant blouse gathered here. The Baltimore Sun also comments on Mick's gender neutral style, referring to it as bisexual chick. Jagger himself commented on his style and costumes. When you're on stage, 
the costumes have to fit. They have to be, for me, glamorous, according to the BBC. Mick Jagger changed the ideas of masculinity in terms of fashion and broke gender barriers when, when it comes to gender norms for dress. Whether it was a blouse, floppy hat, tight jeans, scarves, jewelry, or leather, Mick Jagger expressed his style with confidence. Jagger inspired a generation of future artists and musicians, included, including David Bowie, Freddie Mercury, and Prince and Axl Rose, to express themselves based on their choice, not following traditional gender norms. Mick Jagger has been described as narcissistic, egotistic, self-centered, and flamboyant, flamboyant and radical. Even his fellow bandmate, Keith Richards, referred to Jagger as your majesty. On the flip side, Jagger has also been referred to as brilliant, business savvy, charismatic, philosophical, and even genius. The Rolling Stones have made rock history as one of the longest performing bands, and Mick has even been destined for knighthood, being knighted in 2003 as Sir Michael Philip Jagger. One thing is certain, Mick is not boring, and his flamboyant style will live on forever. A true rock legend. Along with bandmate Richards, Mick puts eyeliner for men on the map, and Johnny Depp's character in Pirates of the Caribbean would definitely agree.